Hey guys, in today's breakdown, I'm going to show you how I made this editing DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so to start off, we have this scene right here. So first thing I did was I went on Pinterest and I found multiple pictures like this and I cropped each one using the cropping toolbar right here. As you can see, I cropped the images in this and then I used my transform area to move it exactly to the center. I did this for every single pic in the picture. Then after that, I made everything a compound clip. I brought it right here. I went into Fusion. In Fusion, what I did was I hit Shift Space typed in Gaussian blur like that put it in grabbed a rectangular mask right here inverted it made the edge really soft like that make sure it fits the image really well just like that and brought this up a bit more the reason i did this was to break the hard edge around it so it looks better and then you're gonna have something that looks like this after that i made it a whole compound clip then to make this scene a lot more interesting i added some film damage that i found off a pack then i set it to color burn just like that I went into the fusion panel, I put a color convert in so that it looks uh, a lot better and then I did the color bin right here. Then in this uh, adjustment layer right here, what I basically did was I took a background node just like that and then I, I masked it out using a rectangle mask. Then I brought it in together just like that and I went here into the rectangle controls and I made the edge really soft. It looks like this. It really breaks the hard edge of the image. Then I added a transform node right here. I keyframed the first frame right there, or my size. Then I went to the end of the clip and then I keyframed this part right here and I took it to 1.1. This basically just gives you a slow dynamic zoom in just like that. It makes it more interesting. And then from there, I have a brightness and contrast node. What I basically did was I grabbed the brightness and contrast node right here. It's right up there. I went to the beginning of my clip, made sure the keyframe, the high and low point right here and then took it down, then went to the center of my adjustment layer and then took it back up and and i used this graph right here then everything put together it looks like that then from there i transitioned into my next scene using this adjustment layer on top here what i basically did for this scene was i grabbed a transform node right here and then i went one two three four five six frames i keyframed the size right here then i went back to the end of my clip i keyframed right here and then i took it up by 1.05 you can use whichever size suits your clip best then I just use this regular graph right here, which is really easy to make. To sell the zoom even more, I added a zoom blur. It's a free plugin in DaVinci. I keyframed the point where my zoom transition starts on the zoom amount right here. I took it down and I went to the end of my clip and I took it back up like this with zero graphs. And then it zooms in just like that. Right, so for my next clip, the timer map I used was this one. For my timer map, I used this graph for the scene. If you want an in-depth tutorial on how to do timer maps, I made a video, link in the description. With the graph, it looks like this. Then for the first adjustment layer here, I added a zoom blur. Same thing with the previous scene, I keyframed the beginning just like that at the amount it was previously. And then I went to the end of the adjustment layer and took it back up to 0.01. After that, in the next adjustment layer, I basically got a transform node, went to the end of my composition, keyframed it and then took it back a bit just like that. And then I made sure I mirrored my edges, make sure you mirror your edges. And I went back to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 frames right there and I brought it back up to 0.1. This time I used a really sharp graph because the movement is super sharp. Then in the next adjustment layer right here, basically did the same thing I did previously, but this time I got the rectangular mask that we had before. And then I keyframed it from the start right here uh, using the width right there. And then, then I went to frame 13 right there and then it opens up. And this is the exact graph that I used to do that. Then here I also added a dynamic zoom as well. As you can see as well, it slowly zooms in, really selling the scene even more. Everything put together looks like that. Okay, so for this adjustment layer right here, basically went in, I got a background node right there. I made it this color right there, as you can see, and I took a rectangular mask. Then I keyframed the center moving from, from right to left like that, and I used this graph. Then for the other adjustment layer down here, I took a transform node, I went to the beginning of my clip, I keyframed the center, then went back five frames just like that, and I took it back, and I used the exact graph that I used before, like this. Then everything put together looks like that. Then I took this compound clip here, which is basically just a bunch of pictures that I got off of Pinterest. I went to the first clip, I took a rectangular mask, then I keyframed it opening like that. Together with the picture, it looks like this. No graphs needed. Same thing for the second picture, rectangular mask, like that, opens up. This time going to the left, everything together looks like that. And then in this same compound clip, same thing in this adjustment clip, I added a dynamic zoom so that it slowly zooms in. And I added a Gaussian blur and I got an ellipse mask right here, as you can see. And I made it hella soft, just like that. Then I paired this with a white flash to transition into this 
almost 3D perspective. Okay, this is how I did it. I'm gonna grab a DVE node just like that and then just copy these settings and then you can adjust using the center axis right here to where you want it to be. And then to draw focus to the box, I basically got a Gaussian blur and a lips mask right here. Then I did this, I inverted it, made the edge soft, and then it's only focused on this position right here. In the same DVE node, I keyframed the Y axis and then I just made it go down slightly, just like that. Then for my next scene, white flash again, the same DVE perspective, but then this time it's looking at the other box. Then everything put together looks like that. For my next scene, I have this really cool stop motion effect. What I basically did was, I got this pics from Pinterest. I had just a bunch of cigarettes that are lined up like this. And then I went into Fusion. And then I used a polygon mask to mask everything out. So without the polygon mask, it looks like this. And I just masked out every single cigarette until it looks like that. In the main timeline, I made everything bigger and I lined them up and it goes like this, exactly with the beat, just like that. And then for my next clip, I set it off with a brightness and contrast node right here. And then it's just a regular clip that's super slowed down. Uh, watch my channel remark tutorial how to make really super slow-mo videos like this using flow frames and from there I have a bunch of pics that I got from Pinterest each of which are three frames and the last one is four I set it off with a white flash to transition into this then I added a film artifact that you can find in my discord server really adds to this animation and then I added dynamic zoom again so it slowly zooms in so white flash slowly zooms in and gives you this really nice uh, effect paired with good sound design it really looks cool from there, another brightness and contrast node, just like that. And just regular clip down, no time room up. Then from there, I just paired the clips together and transitioned them with few artifacts like that. I made sure they, they all stay in the same place, as you can see, and they're quite similar clips. And then I just felt lazy at the end and ended it this way. Nothing, nothing crazy. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching my video. I have seen uh, comments asking me to basically record myself making a flow edit and provide like the resources and have you guys remake the flow edit that I'm making. I'm still working on an edit that I can make that everyone can follow along with. And yeah, also I'm planning on making a tutorial on my sound design because a lot of you guys have been asking how I do my sound design. If you want proper sound effects, just join my Discord server, link in the description and you can ask me any questions as well. If you want most of the assets I've used in this edit, start all in the Discord server, feel free and just grab them and use them in your own edits. With that being said, uh, thank you guys for 400 subscribers. The channel is growing really fast and I'm definitely going to make more videos. Yeah, thanks.